I just read one of the best first volumes of manga I've read in a long time. And I honestly think this series is going to blow up and probably become really big. Now, if you guys don't know, I did a manga haul where I got 10 different volume ones and basically picked them up to go ahead and try out new volumes and new series and just kind of dive into new series that I probably wouldn't have picked up otherwise and one of the volume ones that i picked up in that haul is going to be the one that i'm talking about today so before we get into it go ahead and subscribe i got tons of manga and anime content coming soon with that said let's dive into my review on volume one of a crazy food truck so this series in my opinion is just so so good and let's go and break down kind of the story get a little bit into the plot so i can explain to you guys and then talk about my thoughts now, initially with Crazy Food Truck, I was really excited. This crazy premise of like a Mad Max post-apocalyptic wasteland world mixed in with a food manga with a food truck and this kind of weird aesthetic that doesn't really fit the wasteland just seems so weird to where I kind of just had to pick it up and see if it was good. So mixing in these two different genres is honestly one of the biggest genre blends I've seen in manga in a long time. There's a lot of genre blends where it's like a slice of life comedy romance with food or like Sakamoto Days is like a comedy with action, stuff like that. But this one's just completely weird, like a food wasteland action mystery thriller type it's just crazy all the stuff that goes on here and i'm really excited for it so we get our first introduction to our mc gordon who we quickly learn is both a master chef and also a master at kicking ass we also get our introduction super early on to a young girl who i assume is going to be either like a sidekick or maybe assistant to the food truck or something like that for the remainder of the series and i believe her name is orissa or like orisa orissa makes more sense but it's not spelled like orissa from overwatch so orissa i don't know you know what i'm talking about you can see the name spelling here and we find her basically in a body bag or like a sleeping bag kind of literally just in the middle of the road and gordon pretty much like runs her over it's unclear if he actually runs her over or it gets like real real close to her so he puts her in the truck gets her all clothed and fed and everything to you know hopefully take care of her and kind of nurse her back to health really we then find that the military is actually chasing down orissa and are pretty much trying to eliminate her and this is when we get a really cool chase scene but also kind of action oriented scene too we get to see that orissa most likely possesses either like strength ability or agility or speed or something like that she kind of the vibe of captain america they don't show if she's invincible or bulletproof but they do show that she's able to take down much larger men and stuff like that with little to no effort and then basically gordon and orissa take out this kind of convoy that's coming after them and that's where the story jumps off together we have our main character gordon who's kind of an older guy who just wants to cook his food in peace in the middle of the desert and orissa who's just this young girl who you know pretty much nothing about who's most likely escaping from the military so we get this super cool first initial jump to the story with all this action and kind of this chase scene which is really cool and then from there the story jumps forward and our duo basically team up to go ahead and capture some food so they can cook it together and this is something i really like in this series that i could see potentially being monotonous later down the road with later volumes and just kind of depending on how long the series goes for but it happens multiple times in this one volume where our characters kind of stop from the action they either just move forward or they eliminate the action or you know whatever's going on and they just go find food find some food to make and create a dish and kind of shows us the process on how gordon's creating the dish kind of how he has arisa assisting him with the meal and the techniques that he uses to create these different kinds of foods now at first it sounds kind of boring just like a cooking thing you know what's what's really going on there right now, that's what i like so much about this first volume and hopefully what goes on in the further volumes later on is that they stop these big action set pieces and these big scenes basically to give us more world development that's done in a way of cooking so for example the first one here gordon and arisa go off and fish for squid in what used to be a full ocean but is now just a desert so it might seem on the surface level like oh they're just gathering squid to make like a burger or whatever right but what they're actually doing is showing that this world is so fucked that there was a whole ocean here that is no longer here so we have to fish in sand to hopefully find ocean life that we can eat and consume so this is a weird thing where it doesn't really shove world building down your throat when it does it but it does it in a way that it kind of feels subtle enough to where when it does happen you're like whoa like wait hold on you got to kind of read back and say wait that's that's an ocean there's coral in this desert and then and then gordon goes ahead and explains it and it's just really cool i hope we get more of that in the further volumes and i hope they continue with that as the series goes on because it's just a really cool way of world building without it being done too literally or too intensely you know after that gordon and arissa basically take their squid burgers to a town pretty much to go and sell them and obviously this town in the middle of a wasteland is really not thriving and active so they don't really sell any burgers but they soon find out that this town's actually being enslaved by like an ex-military mob group pretty much and this is a really dope part of the story because we get to see gordon and arissa's kind of morals align in a way that tells us a lot about where they're both at kind of mentally and maybe even emotionally because we see that they obviously have this compassion for this enslaved town to stick their necks out and potentially get hurt even though they really don't need to at all to go ahead and liberate this town basically it's a really cool pit stop in the story because we get to see like i said their morals and kind of where they stand but we also get some good action and we also get that previous world development like i said of the 
making the food. So it might not seem like a huge, big moment in the story, at least in volume one, but for me, it was a pretty cool pit stop. And then after that, our duo heads to a ramen restaurant, and here's where we get the big kind of climax of the volume. We find that the military was actually tracking our characters down the whole time in the hopes to pretty much ambush them. And Arissa basically goes to the bathroom and is gone for a little bit. And the military jumps in and basically tells Gordon like, hey, we know who you are. We know you were in the military before and all these things and kind of exposes him. So we learn now that Gordon used to be part of the military, but for some reason either left, escaped or ran away. We don't, we're not really sure and they don't really explain it just yet in this first volume. But I do think this could add a lot because at first Gordon seems a little bit basic, maybe even a little bit boring because he doesn't really talk or show too much emotion. But now we learn that him and Arissa both have equally large secrets that they're kind of hiding from each other. So it could be really interesting to see how their backstories maybe even connect because she's escaping from the military. He used to be a part of the military. We're not even sure. He could know her and we just don't know that yet. So there's so many things and layers that we just haven't even gotten to in this first volume at all. And then Arissa comes back from the bathroom and basically sees what's going on. And we get the super dope John Wick style fight scene. Like it just seems so John Wick-ish, the way they display it here in the action. And also just the action in this series alone is super clean, it's super well done, it's really easy to follow. I find that a lot of action in the series, especially like Battle Shonen, tend to just be just whirlwinds of shit and you never really can see what's going on. In this series, it's very easy to see what's going on and kind of follow along with the action as it goes. But man, I'd be lying if I said this story did not excite me to read further into this world and pick up volume two. I truly think this could be the next big manga to come out. I'm not sure if there's talk of an anime adaptation yet but i think if they did one for this series i totally think it would hit mainstream in the same way that like spy family does or did or is currently doing or whatever where you see tons of talk online and people you know discourse generally around spy family i think this could kind of hit that it hits a lot of notes tons of genres tons of people i think could be into this series if they gave it a chance and i honestly found nothing wrong with this first volume it's a very intriguing story it's got great art great pacing it's a really concise easy to read volume not too wordy too dialogue heavy or anything like that i'm just really excited because right now this first volume i think is the only volume out volume two i'm pretty sure it's up for pre-order so you might be able to pick it up right when this video drops but man if you're into cooking manga you'll like this manga if you're into action you'll like this manga if you're into wasteland mad max post-apocalyptic stuff you'll like this manga if you're just looking for a fun manga to read this is definitely worth picking up have you guys read crazy food truck have you heard about it is this the first time you're hearing about this series let me know and go ahead leave your thoughts in the comments about this series so far and go ahead and hit that subscribe button thanks for watching all the way to the end and have a good one.